Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the video. Today's video, first place pendulum deck football, baby, let's go! Why, bro, 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 not just first place, but undefeated. So let's get started, boys. I'm gonna showcase you guys deck football right now. Before we get into this video, I got massive news for you guys, baby. The Remy Courts, Sofa Courts, they're coming out in a few days. To honor, who's hyped for that? Tell me, to honor the release of the Remy Courts and Sofa Courts for 48 hours only, I'm releasing the pre-release of the Doremi Court playmat. Look at this absolute beautiful playmat. Artwork done by Frankie. Incredible, look at that. Get your orders in right now. It is a pre-release. I will only order the mats that are purchased in the next 48 hours. If you miss the next 48 hours window, I, I do not have these in stock. I am ordering them just specifically for the 48 hours for the people that order the beautiful Drummy Court playmat. So get yours ASAP and I'll pre-order it and get it here and send it to you guys ASAP. So get it right now, baby, 48 hours. And also don't forget to smash the subscribe button, smash the like button. With that being said, let's get started, boys. Let's get started on the first place pendulum deck football, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go, boys. I know this mat's beautiful, but it's nothing like the Doremi Court mat, baby. So let's go. Get yourself a beautiful Orthodox Easter gift for yourself. Happy Orthodox Easter to all my Orthodox brothers and sisters. But let's get started, boys. We got Servant of Endymion and Triple Magical Abductor. I'm not going to mention too much on the obvious cards. I know some people play Mythical Beast. That's just... Look, I'm, I'm going to live and die with this statement. Mythical Beasts absolutely suck. If you get ashed on your Cerberus, you have to play a whole different game. You cannot, as much as I would love to play Abductor and Cerberus, and you can, you are just not maximizing the value of this deck by mixing a Demon with Abductor. Abductor searches anything in your deck. You guys need to play Abductor in your deck. A lot of people don't, and it, I can't even fathom why. Abductor is hands down better than Servant right now. It is so good, especially when the new Duramicorn Link comes out, that you abuse Abductor so much, you just absolutely need to play it. But that's so obvious, I'm not even going to get into it. I will discuss stuff that aren't as obvious, such as a count here. So there's a specific reason why you're playing these counts here for these Endymions. One, you need more high skills, so you need the Mighty Masters. They're huge for your strategy. One Reflection is all you need. And the only reason you play one Reflection is Mastery can now search either Servant, which obviously you're going to want to search Servant. But later in the duel, if you might need to search another low scale, that's why you play the other Reflection. And its bounce effect is very important against Zodiacs. Uh, I'm going to showcase later on Patreon uh, just a, a, one of the replays that I had. I'm not allowed to, to film too much of any of these locals. I'm not allowed to do that. But I have a replay of one of my combos where I was showcasing how good Reflection actually is. And it's required against Zodiac or else you're going to lose to a Zeus. So playing one Reflection, even though it does brick at times, is absolutely required. And it is a level 7 for Absolute. Double Jackal is also required in case you banish one with Desires. And you, or you open one, you always want your servant to bring one out or a souls to bring one out so you, you can protect yourself from the bureau. But that so far are, are the most important ones in your deck. Next, a card that a lot of people have been cutting, but an Chronograph Sorcerer and Time Gazer. This is absolutely vital for you to play. I can't stress this enough. The whole reason why this deck is so powerful is honestly not the not like it's not the old way of pendulums where it's like you pen five, blah blah blah. It's because all of these monsters, okay. With the exception of Jackal, but that's okay. All these monsters summon themselves to the field. They're all extenders in some way or another. So you play Chronograph because now you're guaranteed another extender. And it turns Magical Abductor into an extender. Because Abductor could search Chrono. And that putting monsters on field is very vital. There are times where I end it on with six negates with not even Pendulum Summoning. And I do this multiple times on stream. Everyone who's seen me stream can attest to that. So you, these are absolutely required. A lot of people have been cutting it because Time is a brick. Don't worry. Musa Seiya, the new Doremi Cord, unbricks this card if you hard draw it. You're playing triple allure. You just need to play this. You absolutely need to. It's not even, it's not even, you're not even allowed not to play it. It's absolutely mandatory. Next, you guys ready for this? Oh, ha, ha, ha. Magician Souls, baby. Woo! Look at that. First tournament with this deck. Undefeated. Easily. Why? Because Magician Souls is the best card in Yu-Gi-Oh! Want to know what else pairs with Magician Souls? 
a little secret that he's gonna have to stay tuned the whole video to figure out. Ah, uh, that's right, baby. I'm gonna have to talk about that secret a little later in the video. You guys can't know that yet. But Magician Soul is absolutely necessary. For those who can't afford Magician Souls, that's okay. That's totally fine. But that's the same equivalent of playing, what's the best deck right now after Pendulum? Dragon Link? Are you gonna play Dragon Link without LP? So sure, if you guys wanna play Pendulums without Souls, you could do that. But this is the equivalent of playing Dragon Link without LP. So you could still play Dragon Link good, but it will just be suboptimal. There are budget versions, and if you guys wanna see budget versions, let me know in the comments, maybe I'll make a video on it in the future. But as of right now, if you're playing Endymion, Triple Souls is an absolute requirement because it utilizes some of the best cards in this whole deck, which I'm gonna mention when we get there. Uh, double Jester Confit, again, Jester Confit, you need to put monsters on the board, man, that's it. And I don't care what people say, yes, Jester Confit seems like it sucks, but it's absolutely required with the cards that you're playing, like Restage, which I'll mention later in the video, that's absolutely required. I call this deck Endymion Draw, because you're utilizing so much draw power, it's unbelievable, that is required with the souls, so look at this now. I'm gonna show you guys all the draw cards, okay? You got triple souls, you got double blue boy, okay? It's five draw cards. You got double secrets. Before we move on, I'm gonna mention now why you play double secrets and double blue boy. This is very simple. You normal summon one blue boy, it gets hand trapped, right? Now, because you have another blue boy in your deck, you're not able to use Crowley to resolve Crowley. This is very, very important. If your first blue boy gets interrupted, you wanna make sure Crowley's always live to give you a plus one. Hence, you always must keep one of each of these in the deck. That's why you play two of each. And pardon the different uh, rarities. It's fucking ugly, but it's all good. Uh, anyways, maybe if we get some more Drummy Court playmat sold, maybe your boy could rock some multi-spell books. Who knows? We're going to continue on the draw power now. we got triple desires, triple allure, one upstart, one into the void. Do you see how much draw power this is? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Oh, you thought I was done? Nah. Double Foolish Burial Goods and Metal Post Fusion. You are playing 19 draw cards, bro. Tell me a deck that plays 19 draw cards. Please. Oh, wait. That's right. Let me save you time. You can't. 19 draw cards is more draw cards than probably any deck in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh. And the beauty of it is every one of these cards can be ulti. How beautiful is it? Can, can Foolish Burial Goods become ulti? It's been reprinted like 19 times. I would hope so. But this is your draw lineup. You might be wondering now, Trip, why are you playing Goods? Why are you playing Metal Force Fusion? Well, activating Goods will send you Metal Force Fusion, right? And that's amazing. That's amazing. You know, you get Metal Force Fusion, you draw one. But let's not forget as well, Foolish Burial Goods, when you're going first, the only card that this deck loses to is Dark Ruler No More. Foolish Burial Goods, if you don't need the draw and you don't have access to it, can also send Magician's Restage to the Graveyard. Magician's Restage will then trigger to search your Dark Ruler out in Magician's right hand. Now, hold on. Now you might be saying, but Trip, I'm not even facing a deck that has Dark Ruler. I'm scared of their five trap cards. Well, don't worry. That's why we side Magician's left hand. So when you face a trap deck, you're not scared of them breaking your board because the only way they're breaking their board is by setting five. So instead of sending Restage to search for right hand, you're sending Restage to search for the left hand. So it works absolutely incredible. And this is where you add in the double goods and the fusion with unlimited draw power to ensure that this combo will always resolve. Absolutely beautiful. And it really makes me happy because this deck it just works so incredibly well. And in fact, you play so many extenders that even if you hard drew the Metal Force Fusion, you guys want to see the best card in the entire extra deck? The best card in the entire extra deck? That is Daybreaker. I'm going to showcase you guys an amazing combo that no one recognizes. But what you do, you use Daybreaker to pop your own cards, man. You have no idea. This is the most used card in my whole extra deck. This is so mandatory for your strategy. It's unbelievable. You're playing so many special summons with Restage, Jester, Souls, Chronograph, Abductor, Reflection, Master, Servant, Mastery, everything. And if it's not one of those extenders I just named, it's one of these 18 draw cards. So... You Daybreaker, pop your Fusion if you need to. You Daybreaker, pop your own Abductor so you can scale your second Abductor you hard drew and then resolve that one. There's so many crazy plays you could do. Daybreaker, pop your Servant that's resolved, put it back in the scale, now you have a low scale. So it synergizes incredibly well with this deck. So let's take away our 25 draw cards. And next, 
our last three cards of our deck are the best cards in the deck. Spell, Power, Mastery. Now you're left with a 42-ish card deck. I don't even... Man, I can't even count, bro. Well, it's 42-something. But this deck is absolutely incredible. It ended up being undefeated. Why? Because it's so clean and smooth. So much draw power. So much searchability. So much beautiful plus cards that do so much for you. Oh, you open multiple Spell for Power Masteries because you drew 15 times in one turn? That's okay. Because when Servant Specials Magical Abductor, Magical Abductor is bringing out Magician Souls. And Magician Souls is then going to send out Jackal. This is one of the combos I was mentioning earlier that everyone needs to do. Servant must always send Abductor. Abductor must always search Souls. Souls must always send Jackal. Then after you got the plus for Magician Souls, you turn into a Selene. Selene will then special the Jackal. Now, remember when you went Servant Jackal? For the price of nothing, you went Selene Jackal instead with Resolving Magician Souls and Pendulum Summoning an Abductor. So plays like that are the differences of going undefeated and going X1. And that's very important to play optimally when you're playing Pendulums because if your opponent hand traps you four times, this deck could still very easily play through it. It's absolutely beautiful. Now I'm going to talk about the extra deck and how important... Oops. The Drummy Court playmat wouldn't do that, so you guys should go check that out on tripgaming.com. But anyways, uh, I'm going to show you guys now the extra deck and how it uh, works out very, very well. First and foremost are that your two best cards in the extra deck after Selene are these two. You use these so much, you have no idea. Electrum's gone, so you have to settle for Daybreaker. You want to know how broken Electromite is, by the way? Electromite's uh, effect, like, it's not a cost, but Electromite's cost, not even, even though it's not a cost, to activate its effect is popping a card, right? Uh, you have to pop a card to actually resolve its effect. Bro, all Daybreaker does is just pop. And it's still so good. <laughs> Imagine if you actually cut the ad after your pop. That's insane. But you use these all the time. If going second, you normally Daybreaker first. Make them waste their interruption. And then you Crowley. And then you Selene. So after you go one of these, you go into Selene. And then Selene, well, the second this drops, your opponent must deal with it or they lose. Because then you can freely go into Access Code. A lot of times I even started with access code before any of these. And it's very easy to do this even without pendulum summoning. Sometimes your your order, uh, chronological order of summoning is very important. And it, it changes uh, a lot. So sometimes you would have to go like Daybreaker, pop something. Selene, pop something. Access code, okay. They'll do something to get rid of it. They have to. Pendulum summon, okay. Crowley, okay. Selene, okay. Mighty Master, blow up everything. Because Selene's not once per turn. So the utilization of your cards that destroy cards going second are very important. I do play triple Selene and there's a reason why. You must play this amount. So the specific reason why you need to play three Selene is that going first, you go into one Selene for your combo, okay? And then you go into absolute cross sheep. Then cross sheep and vortex will give you a second Selene uh, to bring something out. And then you're gonna need a, a, the last Selene for a follow-up. So you need three Selene in this deck. It's absolutely mandatory. If you're trying to play this deck on a budget and don't wanna spend 10 bucks on the best card in Yu-Gi-Oh, too bad, you, you have to play three. Uh, next, you play one Baby Selene. So Baby Selene is better. It, it's it's okay to play Relinquish Anima. Relinquish Anima is a great card in this deck because you're playing a bunch of level ones. But this card ensures that you could Daybreaker under anything. You could Daybreaker with a Time Gazer. You could Daybreaker with a Disco into Time Gazer or Magical Abductor. Daybreaker will trigger it to pop a card. Uh, if you hard drew Spellbook of Knowledge or if you hard drew Spellbook of Secrets and you needed to draw Magical Abductor, let's say, for example, to search the Magician Souls out of your deck to trigger your Magician's Restage. Well, that's okay, because now your Secrets and Knowledge will work on your Magical Abductor because the Magical Abductor turns it to Artemis, draw two. Pop one, draw two. Easy. So it is necessary to play the Artemis. If you don't have it, it's fine. Just play Relinquish Anima. You need to play one of the two. Next, I'm playing Nightmare Phoenix and Nightmare Unicorn. The reason why is I, I expected to play a lot of trap decks, so I didn't want to lose to Anti-Spell by itself. And as evidenced by my last stream, I got Anti-Spell. And if I had Nightmare Phoenix in my deck, I won the duel. I didn't because it was on Dueling Book. But Nightmare Phoenix does come up, but it's not that necessary. It's good. But if you guys noticed, my deck didn't gonna have Instant Fusion. Instant Fusion is a solid addition because it's a level 1. But I didn't own a Millenniumize at the time uh, when I was doing this. Uh, so I just did this to get Phoenix and get to get Unicorn. I play 1 Cross Sheep, 1 Mascarena. Uh, very mandatory. Masquerade is extremely mandatory. If you don't have access to Reflection, you need... Uh, by the way, speaking of, of ma Reflection, don't play Magister of Endymion. Magister of Endymion is the most overrated Endymion card I've ever seen in my life. It is only good with another card. Why do you want to play 
cards that are reliant on other cards that honestly are not even that good with other cards. It is just the definition of a win more card. If you're resolving Magister, you're already winning the duel with five negates. You don't need Magister. It's really just win more. But it will brick you when you scale Magister and you have no serp, like no way to special Magister. It's fucking useless. So Magister sucks. Don't play it. What you ensure not to lose to Zeus with is you end on a Mascarena or you end on uh, making sure your soul is ascending reflection to the graveyard so summoning it with Selene. Uh, next, you have Appaloosa and Sayusha. Until Musaseya comes out, the Doremi Chord, you need a Sayusha. Sayusha is very important to fix your scales, especially in deck that special summons 14,000 times. Absolute and Vortex. Amazing, obviously. Okay, that's extra deck. Now, the beautiful side deck. You want to know why we played 15,000 draw cards? You guys see this? What was the exact count? 19? We played 19 draw cards. You want to know why? To search your auto wins. Dragon Link, nice deck, bro. Any single combo deck in the world. Sphere Mode, nice deck. Lava Golem. Bro, that's a very beautiful, very beautiful window that you have. It's so beautiful. I hope it enjoys its time in the graveyard. So here's what you do against that um, invoked should all most overrated deck of all time. Here's what you do. You scale two cards, okay? You scale an Abductor, you scale a Mighty Master. Your opponent instantly thinks, fuck, this guy has a Mighty Master. Oh my god, he's getting negate my Shadal Shizam. Let me just activate my window right now. No problem, dude. Okay, Lava Golem. Goodbye, Mikaba. Goodbye, Shadal Shizam. Okay, Pendulum 5. Okay, GG. Very simple. And Triple Dark Ruler. These nine. I don't care what anyone says about oversighting. Open one of these nine. You win the duel. You can play with two other cards in your hand that are playable, and you'll destroy them. Resolve Servant, you win. Clear their board. Resolve Servant, win the duel. Very simple. You need to see one of these nine. This is extremely important when you're playing Pendulums. Pendulums is the only deck that could happily use Lava Golem in Sphere Mode and not even give a shit about normal summoning. You just take out the Spellbook Engine. You completely just take out the Spellbook Engine when you play these. You take out a car, a Magician Restage in right hand, and you're good to go. You auto-win the duel, and you're still playing 10,000 draw cards. Next, against back row. If you feel this is overkill against shit decks, like Invoked, uh, you don't need to. You can just play Dark Ruler. You don't need to side deck against shit decks. Don't forget that. Against decks that just aren't that good, don't overside. Your entire Pendulum engine will just destroy them going second. Pendulum's the only deck uh, that could destroy boards going second in this meta consistently. Like four negate boards, like nothing. So Dark Ruler will be good for the like the sh half shit decks, but for the good decks, but, like Dragon Link, play, play all these. Okay, next against Back Row. So I don't own Feather Duster, otherwise I would play Feather Duster, but I playing Triple Denko Seca. I'm gonna explain exactly why. Okay. Uh, let's say you're facing Invoked Shadal. Let's say you're facing any version of Dogmatica uh, with Punishment. Let's say you're facing anything that doesn't have Zodiac. Basically, any trap deck that does not have Zodiacs. Just normal Danko, bro. GG, my friend. That's it. You're playing Elich, okay? You're playing Elich, okay? No one's fucking thinking of Danko right now. As long as it's not a Zodiac variant. You just normal Danko. You win the duel. If I had an opportunity, I would make this be Feather Duster. And I'd play two more Dankos. But you cannot play Lightning Storm in a deck that, like this. Because... When you uh, draw in your hand, Magical Abductor or Servant of Endymion, okay? Let's say you draw, you have some hand like this, okay? This is your hand. Very typical. Uh, you draw for a turn, you draw Denko. Ma imagine Denko's Lightning Storm. Well, bro, you can't scale Servant or Abductor. You, you, you can't. You can't. You, you just can't do it. So, why don't you just normal Denko? Your opponent is going to cry now. And then you could do this. Now, let's say you... you don't have the Denko right now, okay? Let's say you have, you don't have it. Let's say you have, for example, uh, okay, here, we're definitely not opening two Jackals. Okay, this is this is our hand going, okay? Imagine this is your hand. Okay, well, what's your first play? You're gonna wanna scale Servant, right? So you're gonna scale Servant, let's say you go Secrets into into Blue Boy. Oh, you're gonna also side out your Blue Boy engine with Denko. So let's say you just go Foolish Braille Goods to send whatever, okay? Blah, 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 okay, let's say you draw. You draw You draw now, whatever. Then let's say you, then you draw the Denko. Well. Lightning Storm cannot be activated because Servant is on the scale. With Denko, you never can freely scale your Servant or scale your Abductor. Just make sure not to waste your normal summon. Just in case you draw into the Denko. That's it. So it's more important to scale than normal. So Denko is better than Lightning Storm in that regard because of that specific reason. So against Backward X, we play the Triple Denko. Okay. On top of the Triple Denko, we keep the Restage Engine in. And make sure to side in left hand instead of right hand. 
because if this card goes down against a trap deck you auto win the duel it's over it, it's absolutely over because trap decks are supposed to be grindy and you're supposed to beat them in the grind game right well this is going to get a trap every single turn it's continuous and they have no way to out it you're going to kill them uh so this is very important and then also one red reboot so these five if i had feather duster i'd make it those six but because i don't have feather duster i'm playing arch Venus centric the reason why you're playing arch Venus centric is you now have a searchable out to a bunch of problems in Yu-Gi-Oh! Now, when you scale Magical Abductor, you could use Abductor to search Arch Venocentric. Scale Arch Venocentric, pop the summon limit, Pendulum 5, kill him. Let's see, you're facing, I don't know, Heroes. Magical Abductor effect. He doesn't know what's coming. He thinks you're about to search Mighty Master. Search Arch Venocentric. Normal summon Arch Venocentric. Goodbye, Dark Law. Have a good day. Bye. And you destroy them very versatile card in this whole game of Yu-Gi-Oh that a lot of people have just forgotten. Arshina Centric is amazing, okay? Highly recommend you play this card. That's it for the deck profile. This deck has been incredible for me. I'm going to be playing this in the upcoming LCS coming soon, in the upcoming tournaments, and hell, you watch my Twitch stream, you'll be seeing a lot of this then too. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget, you guys only have 48 hours to get your Doremi Court playmats. I do not have them in stock. I'm going to see who wants the playmats and order it for you guys. So get it on my website right now. Let's go, baby. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!